the great god Odin sat on his throne and looked at the young god Thor. Spit in this jar, Odin ordered. Why should I? Thor grumbled. He had a hammer and went round hitting anyone who upset him. <coughs> Odin sighed. Don't argue, Thor. Just do it. It would take too long to explain to thick Thor just what he was up to. Look, he said, holding the jar under Thor's nose. All the other gods have had a spit. Gah! Thor said thoughtfully, or Thorfully. <laughs> oh. What are you going to do with that lot, Odin? Make a man, the chief god said. A very special man. I need to send him down to Midgard, that's Earth, because they're in a right muddy mess down there. Hey, so maybe Midgard needs a mudguard, Odin joked. It wasn't a very good joke, but he wasn't a very bright god. Oh well, here goes. The hammer horror shrugged and spat into the bowl. <coughs> Using his great and godly magic, Odin made a man. <coughs> he called him Kvasir and sent him down to Midgard. <coughs> now, Kvasir was the wisest man on earth. Well, so would you be if you'd been made from the spit of the gods. <coughs> he solved lots of problems for the people of Midgard. <coughs> everybody loved Kvasir. Well, nearly everybody. There were two brothers, Fiala and Gala, who absolutely hated him. Now Fiala and Gala were mean, nasty and jealous of Kvasir. Well, so would you be if you were a dwarf who lived underground with hundreds of other smelly dwarfs. And Fiala and Gala were dwarfs. It is said that the blood of Kvasir is magical, Fiala muttered one dark day. Of course, underground, all the days were dark. Is it? Gala asked. It is. Whoever drinks it becomes a great poet, and we are going to get his blood. Fiala chuckled. We are? We are. Now here is the plan. The plan? We invite Kvasir to a party here. A party? Yes, you know, a knees up with wine, and when he's good and drunk, you stab him. You stab him? No, 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 no. You stab him, Fiala hissed. What'll you be doing while I stab him? Gala asked. I'll be waiting with the jars to catch the blood. Right? Right. So the dastardly dwarfs carried out their plot and bled Kvasir drier than a smoked pork pie. The dreadful duo mixed the blood with honey and made it into honey wine or mead. The bloodthirsty brothers kept it to themselves and as the years passed they grew crueler and crueler. One day, they entertained Giant Gilling and his wife. He eats a lot, Fiala grumbled. A lot, the gruesome Gala agreed. Let's get rid of him. Get rid of him. I say, Gilling, Fiala said to the giant. How about some fish, sir? It's getting stuffy in here. How about a sail in our boat? Good idea, Giant Gilling growled. You coming, Mrs. Gilling? You go, dear, Mrs. Gilling grumbled. I'll just get seasick. Have fun. But Giant Gilling had no fun. The deadly dwarf sailed out to sea and tipped him overboard. Swim! Especially when he's stolen around my neck. I'm going to drown. And that's the end of him, Fiala chuckled. And eh? We're breaking news to Mrs. Gilling. Perhaps she'll buzz off him, the devious dwarf muttered. But Mrs. Gilling didn't go. She just sat there and cried. The tears fell on the floor and sloshed around the cave. My feet are sopping wet, Fiala fumed. My feet are wet too. So, Get a large millstone and stand on the cliff above the cave entrance. When she steps through the door, just drop it on her head. Gala hurried to obey and Fiala spoke to snivelling widow Gilling. Would you like to step outside and see the sea? Oh, I'll show you where your darling husband met his water in. That's right, uh, just step this way. Uh, no, 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 after you. Now, uh, lift a bit, uh, right, right a bit back there. Right, Gala, drop it! Car, stone the crew!
Scrolls, it worked! Galar cheered. The brothers went back to their cave and slept a happy sleep. But did they live happily ever after? Of course they didn't. After all, this is a horrible history story. The giant son came looking for revenge and drowned them both. Ah!